Hey student, as we all know that some organisms synthesize their own food while other organisms they cannot synthesize their own food. They depend on others for their food supply. The organisms that synthesize their own food are called autotrophs while the organisms that cannot synthesize their own food are called heterotrophs. As a result, there are two modes of nutrition, autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. In this lecture, we will study autotrophic mode of nutrition in detail. The word autotroph is made up of two words, auto and troph. Auto means self, while troph means nourishing or feeding. So, the term autotroph means self-feeding. So, the organisms that make their food themselves or synthesize their own food are called autotrophs. So, if we want to define the term autotroph, then we can say that autotrophs are the organisms that synthesize their own food. For example, green plants and some bacteria. Now let's see how plants synthesize their own food. As we know that plants consume inorganic carbon sources like carbon dioxide and convert them into carbohydrates. So does that mean that only and only carbon dioxide is required for the synthesis of carbohydrates? The answer is simple no. There are many more things that a plant needs for the synthesis of carbohydrates. Here is a list of them. Carbon dioxide and water, these are the two sunlight and water required for the synthesis of carbohydrates. Sunlight and chlorophyll, they help in this synthesis process. Now let's go in a bit detail. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through the tiny pores found in the leaves. These tiny pores are called stomata. Though some amount of gaseous exchange do take place by the surface of stem, roots and leaves but the stomata are dedicatedly responsible for this gaseous exchange. These stomata are surrounded by special types of cells called guard cells. Water flow in these guard cells is responsible for opening and closing of the stomata. Let's see how. When water flows inside these guard cells, they swell and thus they open the stomata. And in this condition, plants are able to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. While when water moves out of the guard cells, they shrink and in turn they close the stomatal pores. In this situation, plants cannot exchange carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Next, plants need water for the synthesis of carbohydrates. They absorb this water from the soil. Now, these CO2 and water needs to be converted into carbohydrates. For this conversion, plants need energy. They obtain this energy from sunlight. Now, the question arises that how do plants absorb the sunlight? For that, the leaves of the green plants have a special organelle called chloroplast. This chloroplast has a green pigment called chlorophyll in them. This chlorophyll helps in the absorption of sunlight. This is the cross section of the leaf. These are the outermost layers, upper epidermis and lower epidermis. These are the stomatal pores which are surrounded by special cells called guard cells. These are the chloroplasts that are the organelles present in the cells which have chlorophyll molecules. These are the chlorophyll pigments. Now these chlorophyll, they trap or absorb the sunlight and convert the CO2 and water into chemical compounds like carbohydrates. So did you notice that they convert light energy into chemical energy. The whole process in which CO2 and water are converted into carbohydrates or glucose in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll is called photosynthesis. 
the word photosynthesis can be split it into two photo that is light and synthesis so it means synthesis so it means light so now can you define the term photosynthesis we can define photosynthesis as the process in which carbon dioxide and water are converted into carbohydrates or glucose in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll let's see about the equation of chlorophyll generally the whole process of photosynthesis is depicted by this simple equation if you look closely you will see two interesting facts first that carbon dioxide is being reduced to carbohydrates and second light energy from sunlight is required to cleave the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen the hydrogen goes on to carbon dioxide and makes carbohydrate while the oxygen is released in the atmosphere in short we can divide the whole process of photosynthesis into three main steps first absorption of light energy by chlorophyll second conversion of this light energy into chemical energy and splitting of water molecule third reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates so now we can modify our definition of autotrophs we can define autotrophs as the organisms that synthesize their own food by using carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll by the process called photosynthesis now let's quickly summarize plants need four important things to synthesize their own food co2 that is carbon dioxide water sun that is carbon dioxide plants take in carbon dioxide through stomata these stomata are surrounded by guard cells and water flow in these guard cells ensure the opening and closing of stomata when water flows inside these guard cells they swell and thus open the stomata this helps in plants to uptake carbon dioxide from the atmosphere while when water flows outside these guard cells they shrink and thus closing the stomatal pore in this situation plants cannot exchange carbon dioxide from the atmosphere next we studied about chlor next chlorophyll pigments help the plants to absorb sunlight they use this light energy from sunlight to cleave water molecules and split them into hydrogen and oxygen the hydrogen from here reduces carbon dioxide and synthesizes carbohydrates while the oxygen is released to the atmosphere